Yellowstone, Toba, and Taupo supervolcanoes and their past catastrophes, their super eruptions, and the recent activity that we'll see up to today. As you can see, they're basically all around the Ring of Fire. Taupo is in the North Island of New Zealand, not far from the White Island eruption that took place December 9th, unexpectedly. Toba is bigger than Yellowstone and any of the Yellowstone uh, eruptions of the past two million years. And of course, we know that Yellowstone is basically on the Ring of Fire and it has the same man, ma magma plume that uh, feeds the West Coast high threat volcanoes. And you can see the biggest orange circle is Toba here towards the upper right hand side. That's the Toba 74,000 year ago eruption. After that is the Yellowstone Huckleberry Ridge 2.1 million years ago. Then the Yellowstone Lava Creek 640,000 years ago. Then the uh, Long Valley Caldera 760,000 years ago. And then Yellowstone again. This is a picture of Toba, Lake Toba volcano in Sumatra, Indonesia. And from what they claim, because of the lack of vegetation in that area, they believe that this volcano is only a few hundred years old. Now, according to Volcano Discovery, Yellowstone, as we know, is in the state of Washington, supervolcano, caldera, 2,805 meters, that's 9,203 feet in Wyoming, in the Yellowstone National Park region. And uh, the latest quake score, of course, we had uh, just today one magnitude, and uh, we had a few quakes. As you, you'll see a couple of videos back, I post regularly on Yellowstone. And they had 222 quakes in February and three quake swarms. Yellowstone is one of the largest known volcanoes in the world and the largest volcanic system in North America. The volcano is found above an intraplate hotspot that has been feeding the magma chamber underneath Yellowstone for at least two million years. The giant caldera is a product of large-scale collapse of the crust after three so-called ultraplinian or supervolcano eruptions, super eruptions. Large explosive events that erupt several hundreds to few thousand of cubic kilometers of magma. These eruptions took place 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 million years ago, 640,000 years ago, and Yellowstone is also the world's largest hydrothermal system. It has over 60% of the world's geysers. It has 182 geysers, mud pools, and fumaroles. The most famous feature in Yellowstone, as we know, is the Old Faithful Geyser. The future supervolcano eruptions at Yellowstone. Yellowstone's magma chamber is believed to still be active and contains at least 15,000 cubic kilometers of melt. It cannot be ruled out nor predicted that there will be another super eruption at Yellowstone in some future. In recent years, the caldera has been studied and is being monitored more closely. Yellowstone has been showing unrest in the form of deformation, ground uplift, temperature changes, and seismic swarms, all of which have been followed with great interest and in rising some concern. Seventy small earthquake swarms were recorded in the volcano between 1983 and 2006, and on the other hand, such activity is probably entirely normal for a lar large dormant supervolcano. Now, despite the unrest, there is currently no reason to believe that there are precursors to another large supervolcanic eruption to happen in the near future, years or decades. And more likely, these are normal activities in dormant stages of large active volcanic systems. And in addition, most of the activity can be related to the hydrothermal system rather than the magma chamber itself. Statistically, even though the interval of time lapsed since the last such eruption, is similar to the interval separating the past three eruptions, statistical likelihood that such an event will repeat itself in the next few hundred years is very low. 
Unfortunately, most media reports in recent years have been exaggerating the risk greatly. Now, Yellowstone Plateau developed through three volcanic cycles over two million years that included some of the world's largest snow eruptions. The Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, about 2,450 square kilometers, about 2.1 million years ago, created the more than 75 kilometer long island park caldera. The second cycle concluded with the eruption of Mesa Falls Tuff 1.3 million years ago, forming the 16 kilometer wide Henry's Fork caldera at the western end of the first caldera. An activity then shifted to the present Yellowstone Plateau and accumulated 640,000 years ago with the eruption of 1,000 cubic kilometers of Lava Creek Tuff and formation of the present caldera, 45 by 85 kilometers. Now, the resurging, the resurgent doming subsequently occurring at both the northeast and southwest sides of the caldera and voluminous intra-caldera rhyolitic lava flows were erupted between 150,000 and 70,000 years ago. No magmatic eruptions have occurred since the end of the Ice Age, but large hydrothermal eruptions did take place near Yellowstone Lake during the Holocene. Now let's go to uh, Tapo Volcano in New Zealand. Tapo in, in the center of New Zealand's North Island is the caldera of a large rhyolitic supervolcano. It is a supervolcano, Tapo Volcano, produced two of the world's most violent eruptions in geological recent times. The Tapo Volcano forms part of the Tapo Volcanic Zone, a region of volcanic activity that extends from Ruapehu in the south through the Tapo and Rotorua regions. And this is it. Look at that. It's even snow covered. The North Island of New Zealand has been active for the past two million years. It's still highly active. And here we are. That's it, the aerial view of it. And this is Lake Tapo, the caldera, and various other calderas there as well. There we go. So this is not far at all from the um, White Island volcano eruption that we had December 9th. Now the Tapo volcano forms part of the Tapo volcanic zone, the region of volcanic activity that is, it extends from Ruapehu in the south through Tapo and uh, Rotura regions to White Island. That's the area that exploded uh, December 9th, as we can see right there. It was a hydrothermal explosion. As you can see, the White Island volcano is very low lying, and the caldera inside the um, the crater inside, as you can see, is below sea level. There were areas where it was filling with water, and that was superheated to the point where it had to escape, and that's how the explosion took place. Now, um, Tapo began erupting 300,000 years ago, but the main eruptions that still affect the surrounding landscape about 26,500 uh, 26, years ago which is responsible for the shape of the modern caldera. However, there have been many eruptions, more eruptions with major ones every thousand years ago or so. And um, the last uh, timeline of last 10,000 years of eruptions. Considering recent history alone, the volcano has been inactive for an unusually long period of time. But considering its long-term activity, it was inactive for much longer between 8,100 and 5,100 BC. 3,000 year inactivity compared to the current 1,800 years of inactivity. Some volcanoes within the Taupo volcanic zone, as we see here, all these, have erupted far more recently. However, notably the, v, the violent VI5 eruption of Mount Tarawera. Where's Tarawera here? Taupo is here. Okay. I don't, I can't see that. Um, Tarawera in 1860, 1886. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. North Island of New Zealand, 24 kilometers southeast of Ro Rotorua. There's Rotorua right there. Lake Rotorua right there. Okay. Where were we? Well, the White Island we saw play of, in the play of, yeah, okay. Um, 
Okay, they, they began, okay, where were we? They began erupting 300,000 years ago, but the mean eruptions still affect, in effect, surrounding the landscapes. Now, the recent history of volcano has been inactive for an unusual period of time. The Rata, Ra, the Tarawera, that's it, as we were talking about. This eruption was one of New Zealand's largest historic eruptions, 1886, and a frequent activity of the White Island, which erupted, as we said, in December, 2000, December 9th, 2019. Earlier eruptions, the Igden Bright eruptions occurred farther north than Tapo. Some of these were enormous, and two eruptions around 1.25 and 1 million years ago were big enough to generate an Igden Bright sheet that covered North Island from Auckland to Napier. While Tapo has been inactive for 300,000 years, explosive eruptions became more common. 65,000 years ago. Okay, but we had the other one at 26 and a half thousand years ago, which was a super eruption. Okay, it's, this is a super volcano. The Tapo super volcano, according to Volcano Discovery. Caldera is 2,493 feet, normal status. And uh, we have had some earthquakes, as you can see in March, February, February. Yes. The most active rhyolitic volcano of the Tapo volcanic zone, as we said before, the caldera now filled by Lake Tapo. So the caldera has a lake in it, largely formed as a result of the voluminous eruption of the Oruani An Oruanui Tefra 22,600 years before the present. And it was the largest known eruption at Tapo, producing 1,170 cubic kilometers of tephra. The eruption proceeded during the late Pleistocene. Large explosive eruptions have occurred frequently from many vents within Lake Tapo and near its margins. And the most recent major eruption took place about 1,800 years BC from the at least three vents along the northeast southwest, as we said before. And here's a, uh, a little bit of the cloud-covered area. And then we go to Toba, where we had the 74,000-year-ago super eruption. Toba volcano is, of course, in Sumatra, Indonesia. There it is, Sumatra, Indonesia, not far from Singapore. And um, this erupted 74,000 years ago and caused the bottlenecking of humans Anthropologists believe there were anywhere between 1,000 to 10,000 humans that were left after that eruption because of the tremendous amount of ash. They had no uh, ever, no uh, produce to eat. The water they had they were they were going uh, they were uh, thirsty because of the water being toxic, and uh, very few humans that were were left to survive. As uh, uh, animals and plants as well. Now, Toba Volcano has produced the largest known volcanic eruption on Earth in the past 2 million years, about 74,000 years ago. Uh, more than 2,500 cubic kilometers of magma were erupted. The eruption led to the final formation of one of Earth's largest calderas, 35 by 100 kilometers wide Toba Caldera. Eruptions of this size are extremely rare and are called supervolcanic Super eruptions. The Toba caldera is, in fact, the Earth's largest caldera. It was formed during the four Pleistocene Igden Bright producing eruptions, beginning at 1.2 million years ago and culminating with the colossal Young Toba Tuff eruption about 74,000 years ago, emplacing about 2,500 to 3,000 cubic kilometers of dense rock equivalent of Ingden Bright and air fall ash from the vents. And after that eruption, resurgent doming formed the massive Samosir Island and Uluan Peninsula. The eruptions include a series of lava domes and growth of Solfa Tarikali active volcano to the south margin of the caldera. And here we have the images of it. And they say because of the fact that it doesn't have that much vegetation around, it could be, they believe that it's only a couple of hundred years old. Uh, 
Amazing. So these are the three supervolcanoes of the area around the Pacific that are still active, as we can see. These are the Toba volcano, February 18, quakes 3.3. And the depth is very deep. It's one, 126 kilometers depth. The Yellowstone, as we know, is being monitored by Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And there are shallow earthquakes for the most part. Depth, 1.7 kilometers, 5.5 kilometers. And then we have the Taupo New Zealand volcano. Again, the activity and the depth, shallow, 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 shallow. Oh, this is deep. This one here is very deep. 126 kilometers depth. OK, it's the same thing with the uh, Toba, 126 kilometers. 18th of February, 27th of February. So these are the three volcanoes that are um, that had had tremendous amount of uh, uh, catastrophe when they last erupted. And um, that's what I wanted to show you, the three volcanoes that are still active, super volcanoes around the Ring of Fire. I did not include Long Valley Caldera on Cal in California. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.